All right, so this, this is a Yamaha DTX 430K. Uh, it is definitely modified. Um, just trying to show you. Um, I'll tell you why we modified them. Look down here, that's a seven inch drum pad. The drum pad attached directly to the rack. Um, and it was just, it's just too small. Let me see. Yeah, very, very, very small. All right, and it was ugly. Um, so we had some Alesis DM5, DM8 pads just hanging around. Um, we did a, a vinyl conversion via prism um, to the red. So it looks, now it looks like a crimson kit. Um, we did away with the symbols. I'll show you a picture of what the symbols used to look like. Um, and we added some symbols that we have. Um, now, about this module, this module is two zone on the snare, and it seems like two zone on the ride. Everything else seems to be single, single zone. I can definitely verify that um, by going to the Yamaha website, um, but that's what it is for now. Um, the hi-hat pedal, uh, it has um, the chick sound open and close. I don't, I'm not aware of anything like half open, um, half closed. Um, the rack, the rack is actually pretty, it's pretty sturdy. Um, it was a little wobbly. I was a little worried about it um, when I was first um, setting it up. Um, but as soon as I put that middle brace, um, that middle brace right there in, um, everything went fine. Yamaha did some cool things with the symbols. Uh, there's something I like about them, something I don't like about them. Not those symbols, the actual symbols stack on themselves. They do come with felts. Um, I had to, if you notice here, uh, you only see a wing nut because um, my symbols would not fit with um, the, the felts that came with it. Um, the symbol stackers are built into the actual um, the actual clamp, if you can see that. So it's pretty cool. Um, the only thing, you're going to have a problem if, if you're trying to, uh, there, there's no tilt. <laughs> There's absolutely no tilt. So that's just me um, tilting the symbol by itself. There's, so there's no actual real sway um, when you go to hit them. It's, I had to basically, um, I can probably show you that later. They're, they're, they're not gonna move too much, but they trigger fine. Um, and the pads were converted to mesh as well. But the only thing I would say, um, the reason why we're looking at this kit was because uh, of the module. It's a newer module. It's a DTX module um, by Yamaha. Yamaha is pretty good. Um, they have some training features. Um, it's entry level kit. Entry level kit is $5.99. Definitely didn't get it for $5.99. Um, got it on a return um, because the motherboard was uh, was shot. So the seller fixed the motherboard and uh, it's, it's up and running. Um, so we're definitely gonna hook it up to um, MIDI later uh, to give it a little bit more sounds. Comes with 10 onboard sounds uh, kits. Um, they're average, um, but I don't, I'm not sure what you're going to expect uh, from 10 kits. We didn't get it for that. We got it for um, the MIDI use and that it was a, a pretty much a bargain. Um, now, this conversion, um, if you don't have the symbols, it's, it's not that cheap. Um, the the pads itself switching to to mesh um i have that in another video uh that was quick and easy and that was cheap you can switch elisa's pads to mesh pretty easy uh for this type um i had to buy hardware though um my rack clamps are a little bit different because of the yamaha pads that come with it um give me a second let me try to show you this all right so Taking a look at these pads, I'm gonna turn it over. You see that? All right, so that clamps directly onto the rack. I couldn't have that, and I couldn't kinda disassemble it. Um, so I had to get my own um, 
my own clamps. So what I had to do is I had to I had I had L arms for these these um, Alesis use like a rectangular L arm. So I had to get clamps. I had to get universal clamps. Um, so the universal clamps themselves probably cost about ten dollars each. Um, so about forty dollars with shipping um, to to switch this kit fully over um, to a mesh kit. Um, I like it. Uh, it's for my brother. Um, it's not anything um, super expensive um, in case he doesn't like it. But I can always come back and um, and uh, sell this. So the kick uh, it did come with a nice kick pedal. It's strap driven. Um, if you like strap drive, that's okay. Um, if not, just swap it out. You can swap it out with any um, kick drum pedal. Um, the kick tower itself, the kick pad itself, triggers really well. It has some weird um, configuration on the back. I'm not exactly sure about it. Um, but this, uh, this Yamaha pedal um, is definitely uh, top of the line. I don't think they switch pedals um, going from this kit to um, their, their more expensive kits. Uh, so let's take a look at the back of this kick pad. Uh, give me a second as I turn this around. All right. Sorry about that. I'm just going to take that out. I should have turned the module off first. Uh, let me see if I can get a little closer. All right. So there's a pad. And uh, let's get this. There's a pad volume, which is the middle, um, it's, a, it's a knob, it's a middle knob, so you can basically increase or decrease the level. There's a pad in and a pad out. Pad in, um, I'm guessing that goes, uh, well that goes to the module, so I was hearing sounds through the module through my headphones. Uh, pad out, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, I have to look that up, but um, pretty solid. Um, Yamaha didn't really skimp on the the kick um, the kick pad or the hi hat control. Um, they skimped on the symbols. Uh, I'll show you a picture again. They skimped on the pads for this kit. Um, and at five ninety nine, I'm not sure if I can recommend that to you um, unless you have parts. 